Hey everybody, Robin from Backscatter here for another round of Chat with Matt, our resident cinematographer. Hey, I'm Matt Ferraro, the resident cinematographer here at Backscatter. So what are we looking at today, Matt? Well, today we have the Nauticam DSMC2 LT system. Now what this is, is a housing for the red DSMC2 cameras, which includes the Weapon 8K, the Weapon 6K, the Epic W, the Scarlet W, and the Raven. Nice. What also makes it really cool is the fact that it's so small, which means you can pretty much pack up this entire system into a backpack and take it with you anywhere in the world. Yeah, it's pretty unreal. This is like some of the best equipment for underwater imaging and this is the whole package. It is. I mean, you have right here, we have a 8K weapon camera from RED and this thing shoots the highest resolution video of any other camera out on the market. And you combine that with the Nauticam housing and you can shoot essentially IMAX quality film. Yeah, it's a solid combination. Yeah, I really like it. And one thing to take note of is that Nauticam gives you complete control over the camera. Okay. So all the controls that you would find on the side of a weapon camera or any one of the red DSMC2s, you have access to on the side of the Nauticam housing. Nice. Which means really is you have six assignable buttons. And then on the left side of the camera, or actually on the front of the camera, you have two assignables here on the front. And on the side of the housing, you have an assignable switch right here nice. that lets you get at it too. So anything that the camera can do, the housing is able to control it, which means changing frame rates, changing ISOs, uh, doing special features on the monitor, mm -hmm. anything like that you can do with the housing. So that's great to know you're really not sacrificing any features of such a sophisticated camera just by getting it ready to go underwater. Yeah, not at all. And in fact, to keep the whole system tight and small, they've developed the the housing around the Canon mount for the RED camera. So most of you who shoot RED know that you can switch mounts from Canon to Nikon to PL, you name it. Um, so they went after the Canon mount, and right here is the Canon 8 to 15. You have focus and zoom control. If you look at the side of the housing, you have focus and zoom control with the two wheels here. Hmm. So you're gonna be running primarily Canon lenses on this, or what, what kind of lenses can this system accommodate? Well, out of the box, you're looking at Canon, but you can also adapt it to PL. Okay. The opening on this is called an N120. Okay. That's the size. You can also step it up to N200, which is a port size that's bigger, that'll accommodate bigger lenses. Now the N120, that's the same size as like a Nauticam SLR housing, right? It's exactly the same. So it uses the same ports and same extension rings nice. as a Nauticam DSLR housing. So if you've already invested gear and some domes and some macro ports, if you've uh, got the lenses to match them up, odds are you can probably share some equipment here. Yeah, and nice. it's really good too, because for practical situations, when you're out in the field, you're shooting an A, B, C in camera, a lot of times people are shooting a Canon 1DX Mark II or Canon 5D4 as their B and C cameras, mm -hmm. where you can share ports so there's no need to have like multiple of the same ports across the spectrum. Nice, that's awesome. It makes it really easy for packing on those crazy expeditions too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. The other thing I kind of wanted to get at for this housing is the external monitor options. Okay. Typically for um, underwater systems, uh, you're, you're kind of limited on how many external monitors you can use. And Nauticam has developed an extensive line of monitor options. So right here, we're looking at the brand new red touch seven inch monitor housing. I mean, as you can see, it gives you a huge screen to look at, yeah, seven inches. But they kept the housing relatively small. That this feels pretty luxurious for underwater. You know? It is, <laughs> it is. And if you're in, you know, sort of more um, cinema production applications, having a big monitor can be really helpful, especially if you needed anybody pulling focus, like on a PL lens. Mm -hmm. So on the side of the monitor housing are the assignable buttons that mm -hmm. are actually on the monitor itself. So you would use those for things like adjusting uh, edge focus or false color. Okay. Um, you can actually assign any tool you want to it, but those are common ones to access for monitor looks. Yeah. The cable itself is water blocked. Nice. So what that means is that if a shark were to bite your cable, there's no water going into the housing and flooding your 50, 60, 70 thousand dollar <laughs> yeah. camera. So that's pretty. <laughs> Certainly that's some pretty good important. peace of mind there. Yeah. You know, that's very good peace yeah. of mind. Um, the way the monitor works is that uh, RED has a POGO connection, and you can see an example of that on the top of the housing right here. Okay. There's also one on the side, and what Nauticam has done 
is they've created a Pogo to Limo adapter. So on the inside of the housing, your Limo cable plugs in there and then you get full control over the monitor. That Very way. cool. Yes. Very cool. And that is, that is a Nauticam design part and that's like, that's a machined aluminum component there. It's machined aluminum. Yeah. So yeah, um, a lot of those parts you might see as 3D printed. Yeah. It's machined aluminum. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. In addition to the seven inch, the new seven inch touch, there's actually a soon to be released 4.7 inch touch for okay. the red 4.7 inch monitor. Uh, so for those people who want something smaller and more compact, that'll be a great way to go. And then the real common way that a lot of us shoot with is with the Nauticam Small HD, the 502 monitor. That's housing. right. So this is an SDI cable and Nauticam has an SDI bulkhead. And so that you can install right here or any one of the metric 16 through holes in the housing. And so the small HD would be, um, you wouldn't have the same red monitor tools, mm -hmm. but you would have all the small HD tools. There you go. So yeah. waveform, histogram, peaking, all the, those sorts of tools. And I know we've talked about that extensively before. In fact, we've even done a whole nother breakdown video on just that monitor, which while maybe not the best application for something of this level, for that B and C camera you were talking about, that could be a great choice. That can be a great choice. And especially because you can switch the monitor housing to go from SDI to HDMI and back and forth. So if you are shooting B cameras that have HDMI only, you can have that same monitor available for both systems. Nice. And it allows you to have that kind of modular flexibility too. Yeah. Yeah. Which nice. I think cool. is important for productions because, you know, with the day and age of trying to travel with so much gear, mm -hmm. it gets pretty expensive. So if you can come make your system smaller to travel with, you know, you're saving money. Awesome. Awesome. The other uh, very cool monitor option is a monitor back. Okay. So what Nauticam has done is they've designed a 4.7 inch touch monitor mm -hmm. back. So mm -hmm. essentially what we're talking about is losing this whole top piece okay. and putting this onto the back of the housing. So you're swapping out this whole half for that. Exactly. Nice. Um, again, you get the assignable buttons on the side of the monitor. Okay, so just um, like up here, right? Just like up there, mm -hmm. just like on the 4.7 inch external monitor housing. Um, you have, Again, you have all the red tools available to you. So uh, as far as monitors go, it's, it's a really excellent choice and it just keeps you streamlined. So for different applications, you need a different level of profile. You know, if you're jumping in, swimming fast, filming whales, mm -hmm. free diving, that sort of thing, then it makes sense to go for something smaller like this. Yeah, whereas if you have the luxury of room, this allows you to kind of reposition it and be able to not necessarily be locked onto the back of the housing to see what you're shooting, right? Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So uh, what kind of battery powers this system? Well, we use V-mount batteries. Okay. Um, there's a number of ways of attaching V-mounts to a RED camera. Uh, the most common ways and the ways we kind of recommend for the housing are to use REDS V-Lock I.O. Expander. So if you remove this battery here, you see this is a V-Lock mount. Mm -hmm. This is the I.O. Expander part of it. And what this does is it gives you audio, USB sync, remote control, uh, HD SDI and HDMI. Okay. Um, you need those for running like an SDI monitor mm -hmm. out of it. You need these too if you're going to be doing a some kind of tethered remote type system. Okay. And so what I use and I recommend using are the Paglink V-Lock and their stackable batteries. All these right. are 96 watt hours. And so what that means is you can basically you know, you put on two 96 watt, or, watt hour batteries and then you have a ton of juice. Yeah. Which in red cameras they're fairly power hungry, so it's nice to have a lot of power. They actually make these batteries in 150 watt hour size too, so you could actually put two of these. Same hmm. size batteries, just with all that juice in them. That is really cool. Even, really if, cool. even if you know you're not gonna use that much power, even just being able to do that and have that peace of mind, that's huge. Yeah, I love it. And then, and then so like if you, um, you know, you have other batteries, it will accommodate other batteries. I mean, I have probably like a lot of other shooters out there, you know, I just have batteries all over the place and yeah. they're always seem like got them at different times. So they're different sizes. All right. Um, and so it's just really good to, to have that flexibility. I mean, if anybody has questions about what size or what battery will fit in here, um, we're happy to talk them through it. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, if you have a question, this video doesn't answer it. Just give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> so, uh, inside the housing, you're going to notice, that it's, a, it's very similar to a Nauticam, other Nauticam housings. There's 
basically remapping of buttons to, or controls on the camera to your fingertips. Okay. And the way the camera is locked in here is it's suspended from the top on a sliding tray. This sliding tray actually comes with the tool you need <laughs> to install it. That's pretty slick. <laughs> the screws on top, the bolts on top are captured. And it's just four of them. I just tighten them down just kind of a little bit at a time just to make sure it sits on there straight. Yeah. I mean, that's like a small detail, but I'm kind of geeking out how cool it is that that wrench just slides right yep. into the tray. Yeah, and then you just put it right back in there and uh, you just don't lose it. Yeah. And so when you're doing a quick changeover, you know, let's say you're changing lens mounts, you're mm -hmm. going from Canon to PL or one of the other red mounts. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes it quicker and you're not hunting around for the right Allen wrench. Yeah, that's oh, awesome. So to put it in, it just, it just slides right into the dovetail on top of the housing. And then there's the lock that locks it in place. Now this is where the Limo connector comes into play. So I'm just gonna rotate it here to put in. There are red dots on these Limo connectors mm -hmm. to make sure you line them up right. And it's like that. And yeah, that, that, that's it. Um, and then once to, to engage the lens, you're just gonna flip the switch and that drops the gears on. So now you have your, your focus and zoom controls. May I do the honors? Yeah, let's put the batteries on there. <laughs> so just to show you that you can have two yeah. stack batteries on, on top. One other thing I'm noticing that's really cool here is how it is, it's, you know, it's sort of semi suspended from the top with that tray. That's definitely the opposite of what we're used to with most camera systems. Yeah. And yet you can see they've machined it. So there's almost no tolerance between the bottom. It's not free hanging in there, but it still you know, slides into that top dovetail, but still sits on the bottom of the housing. Yeah, it's part of the design that allows the housing to be small because mm -hmm. uh, there does need to be space above the camera. That's where the fans are. Sure. Um, but right on the base of the camera, uh, it doesn't, that's where you would normally put like a tripod plate or a mm -hmm. plate, something like that. So uh, there is no need to like take up the space underneath the camera to put a mount. Yeah. You use that same space on top. Nice. Seal this thing up. Let me show you from the side here. So just snaps on and then latches down. At that point you'd want to draw a vacuum and you're pretty much ready to get in the water, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So now that we've got this thing ready to go in the water, what other kind of steps do we need to do? What's gonna make this thing usable and diveable underwater? Right, well my biggest thing, and I think you've probably heard me talk about this before, is trimming the housing. Cause the last Absolutely. thing you wanna do is fight the camera underwater. Mm -hmm. So thankfully on the skids of the housing, there are a number of holes where you can mount trim weights. On both sides, there's spot spot on the rear door for doing it. And so it gives you plenty of locations. There's actually places underneath the housing where you could actually mount mm. trim weights as well. Nice. So plenty of yeah. plenty of locations for trim weights. And in fact, there's actually spot inside the rear door for mounting trim weights as well. So if you mm. weren't using the double stack battery option, mm -hmm. you know, you might find that the back end was a little floaty. Well, yeah. you can put a weight right inside the back door. Yeah, so that's a lot of airspace in there too. Yeah. Yeah. So just like just like Nauticam does with their other housings, they just have a really easy removable port system here. And if you weren't switching batteries and cards, you have a lens, lens, lens release button. So you just move the gears away from the lens, grab the lens with the lens release, and then boom, put another lens in with gears on it, drop the gears down and you're up and running for in, lens change. In a matter of seconds. In a matter of seconds. Yeah, nice. So we've talked a little bit about the amount of uh, user assignable functions and buttons on this camera in this housing, but what sort of functions are you really assigning to those buttons? Well, for me, one of the most important functions is white balance. Underwater color is key. And so I put it on A, which is the closest thing to my finger. Okay. Um, the other important things to assign are iris open and close. Mm -hmm. And so what I've done is for me is I put it on, let's see if you can see that assignable one and two switch so mm -hmm. I can go up for open down for close it's pretty simple and it's just again it's right at your thumb here so it makes it really easy and quick to get to nice yeah if there isn't anything that you that you need access to but you don't still need it right away mm -hmm. like it'd be something that you'd have time to go into you can always enter into the menu so you have the full menu control 
it reads out on the monitor whether you're using a red monitor mm -hmm. or a small HD. Yeah. You'll get your menus, you'll be able to see them, and then you can cycle through them and pick what you need. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, just, just now in between uh, takes here as you were going through, you know, checking some of the settings on the monitor, it's pretty cool looking at that seven inch screen, seeing everything on there, that's like, Pretty awesome. <laughs> it is big. It, it's really it's it's really the standard for underwater for cinema stuff. Yes, yeah. a seven yeah. inch monitor. A lot of the uh, you know productions will use them like in pools and tanks. But sometimes swimming in the ocean, it's not practical. It's a yeah. lot to push through the water. That's, and then, yeah, that's that's a big billboard right there. You know. Right. So it, it might be it might be good to go with a smaller monitor option. Mm -hmm. um, I think the four point seven inch touch external monitor could be a great. Great way to go. And bottom line, having the versatility to run whatever setup you want and whatever makes sense for your project, that's that's the really huge yeah. part. Yeah. yeah. And so this yeah, this this system gives you that flexibility. Nice. Yeah. Well, if you do have any questions or if you'd like to learn more about this gear, feel free to give us a call here at Backscatter and either uh, speak with myself, Robin, or our resident cinematographer, Matt Ferraro. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks you guys and happy shooting. <laughs>